All right, so for this week's video, we're gonna talk about the uh, RX4 Ultra. Uh, this is Hoyt's longer axle to axle bow for this year. Uh, other than that, it's reasonably about the same as the standard RX4. Uh, really the only difference is your axle to axle and your brace height. So it's gonna have the same cam system. This is their uh, third generation ZTR cam. And the cool thing about this cam for this year is it's got the mod built into the cam. So you no longer have to do the interchangeable mods like you have had to in the past. This year also has the dual draw stop. So you'll notice a big difference when you get the bow back. The back wall on this bow is a whole lot better than, than the Hoyts have been in past years. So what happens is these cables here track through these mods and your draw stops hit on these uh, yoke cables at the bottom. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, adjust this cam or these cams and get them set to 27 inches. And I'll kind of show you how that goes. Hoyts have a uh, letter system on their cam, so the letter system corresponds with the draw length on the top limb. So we're going to move this one to the A setting, which is the shortest shortest draw for the two base cam for this bow. So this bow here is really kind of geared towards the longer draw guys or the guys that really want a, uh, a more forgiving type um, hunting bow. So. And once you move your mods, there's actually a, uh, there's a detent that grabs it, but there's also a window where you can see the letter through the module so you can know what draw length you're in. So the other cool thing about the way they're, they've done the mods this year is they are your draw stops. So on your bottom and your top cam, you don't actually have to move a draw stop. You just have to move the mods, which is pretty simple. All right, so we got the draw length set. Let's go back here and see if it's timed or not. Waiting on David, over here working. I'm making money. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> That's right. Slide there. Let's see what we got on the draw board. Just a tiny bit out of time, but it's so close. I'm not going to worry about it for this. It's not enough that I think I'll feel it on as far as doing the review. You might see it in the shot, uh, you know, if you shot through paper, but as far as just the feel of the bow, it's in time enough to where the let off and everything, the valley is going to feel the same. So we're drawing 71.7 pounds. So, and that's dead on 27. So let's see what uh, she shoots. All right, so after shooting this bow through the uh, chronograph, the bow averaged between three shots at 250 feet a second. Um, and that's once again with the 460 grain Easton axis that I've used on all these reviews so far. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna talk about some specs real quick on this bow um, and kind of what you can look forward to uh, if, you look for, look, if you're looking for this bow. Uh, you've got a 34 inch axle to axle, six and three quarter inch brace height, 
334 feet a second, that's the ATA, that's what Hoyt uses for their speed test. This is the two base cam, they make a three base cam, two base 27 to 30 inch draw, three base 30 to 32. And with that being said, this is kind of geared towards the longer draw guys. This is what's gonna give you the, the uh, 31 and 32 inch draw that some guys need. Um, so this bow you can get from a 30 pound draw weight all the way up to an 80 pound draw weight, depending on what limb set you want. Uh, and the bow itself weighs 4.1 pounds. So fairly lightweight for a bow of this length, this uh, axle to axle length. Uh, the bow max, this bow maxed out was 71 and 71.7. Uh, so let's get a, a couple draw shots on film. So I'll say this, this is by far the smoothest draw I think of any of the 2020 bows this year it just feels like you're not pulling hardly anything shot these I don't know what it is but Hoyt's got the balance just figured out on these this year's bows um, on the shot you notice the bow didn't really kick up down whatever it did it just kind of went straight out which is for me I really like the way these bows balance in the hand uh, this bow is very quiet. Uh, one thing that I don't like about the bow as much is it's really spongy, not really spongy, but it's spongy on the back wall. It's stiff for a Hoyt, but it's still a little bit spongy. So let's shoot another shot. And it does have a little bit of a hand shot. Um, and that's kind of to be expected with the carbon bow. You know, carbon's such a lightweight material that most of the time the carbon bows do have a little bit of hand shot. But once you add your equipment and stuff to it, the hand shot goes away. Um, and I do know this from experience on these. I added some equipment to a RX4 just to see what would happen. And the shot, the hand shock went away. Um, that being said, the, the draw cycle on these Hoyts is a little different this year. It's a little stacked at the front and then it's completely smooth. The farther back you get, especially on this bow versus the standard RX-4, this bow is cr super smooth all the way back. Uh, the Valley's pretty good. Uh, it's not as great as some of the bows that I've tested this year, but it is a pretty good Valley. I mean, right there, it's starting to go. Let's get another shot in. All right, so let's talk about what I like about the bow. Draw cycle is super smooth. Back wall is pretty decent. Um, let's see, what else? Axle to axle is great if you're wanting a longer axle to axle bow. This is definitely the bow you want to look for uh, in the Hoyt lineup. Uh, this bow, M uh, MAP, is $1,600. So it is an expensive bow. Uh, whether the carbon versus aluminum, whether it's worth it to spend the extra money is up to you. Me personally, after having a carbon bow, it's hard to go back to an aluminum bow. I really like these carbon bows. But with that said, uh, I'm looking for a bow that's a little shorter on the axle to axle and a little more on the speed. Uh, and that's all personal preference. It's all about what you want. Um, another thing that Hoyt's still doing is the limb, you'll notice the bottom limb pockets are a lot wider. The bottom limbs are wider and the gap between the cam and the limb is wider than the top. And that's done purposely by Hoyt. It's supposed to do, it's to do with balance, balancing the bow. Uh, another thing you'll notice with all the Hoyts is the risers aren't, the center shot, the shelf isn't center of the riser. The upper part of the riser is longer than the bottom. And that's also to do with balance and uh, tunability of the bow. Uh, so let's talk, a couple, talk about a couple points. Tunability, Hoyt still uses the top yoke system so you can tune your uh, cam lean with your yokes. Uh, other than that, really just adjusting on yokes every now and then and the cables, that's really the only tunability issues that we've seen out of the Hoyts. Uh, balance and stability, I really think Hoyt has the most balanced bow from the 2020 lineup of bows so far. Uh, just personal preference. Uh, draw cycle on this bow is very smooth uh, and the let off comes at 85%, but you can get an 80% mod as well. And I wanna say you may be able to get a 75, but the most common two are 85 and 80. Uh, pretty much it's just gonna be for preference and for the states that don't allow uh, an 85% let off bow. Um, speed, like I said, is a little slower, but the reason behind that is if you're a short draw guy like me, uh, you're gonna be shooting at the bottom of the cam versus shooting towards the top. So keep that in mind if you're looking at a longer axle to axle bow, you will probably be shooting more towards the bottom of the cam. 
Uh, so that's really about it. The, really, the only downsides about this bow, a little bit of hand shock. I really don't like Hoyt's grips. Uh, and I hate to say that because I think they've put some time and effort into their grips. This is their adjustable grip, supposed to help with torque and stuff like that. But I take my grips off. I don't like them. Uh, again, personal preference. Um, and really, that's about it with this bow other than speed. It's, it's, it's actually, it's pretty slow. It's slower than what I thought it was going to be, but it's pretty slow. And if speed doesn't matter to you, then take it for what it's worth. But anyway, uh, yep, this is this year's RX4 Ultra. I hope you like the review. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you checked out the channel off of uh, Facebook or Instagram, please leave your comments, your thumbs up, whatever, thumbs down, whatever you want to do, please leave those on my YouTube channel and not on my social media accounts. I really need the, uh, the publicity and the push on my YouTube. I'm trying to grow this channel. Hopefully you like the content. Uh, check out next week's video. I'm going to be dropping these videos on Tuesdays. So check out every Tuesday about five o'clock and I should have a new video dropped and I'm going to have all the new Hoyt, Bowtech and Matthews uh, lineup of bows for 2020. And I will also do a couple other videos uh, to do with budget bows, and I'll compare some of the budget bows from other, other, other companies. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on next week's video.